All right, it's going to be a, fo a floating focused anchor system. And so this black line right here, that's going to be like my fall line. Um, and this is just to simulate uh, someplace out anywhere. Um, you could adapt this anywhere. So I want this, I want to operate all my devices elevated off the ground. Um, and this thing is just going to topple over if I don't guide this down with back ties and front ties. Um, so I'm going to try to make this as um, efficient as possible and hopefully I can get this done with one piece of cord. Um, and so the best way to start this, and for simplicity's sake, I already laid out all the cord um, so I could shorten up the video time. Uh, but we're going to go all the way to our forward anchors. We're going to start at our forward anchors. So follow me over here. Okay, forward anchors always want to start up with some sort of adjustability and so we can get, go even closer. Um, and so I just want to do a simple Italian or Munter hitch. And I'm just going to lock this off. And it doesn't have to be anything ridiculous, just enough tail to actually be able to lock off. So, Buddy, I've lost the screen. Just That's so fine. You know. Just uh, tap it with your finger and it'll come back. Oh. Yeah, forgot to mention that. And there are a lot of ways to do this. This is more like an OCD way, and so follow me back up. And this is all precious real estate up here. Since my direction of pull, um, everything up here is like precious real estate. So I want all these holes uh, maximized. And so the little holes are gonna be on the back. Um, so I don't need them. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this to tie in uh, my front tie positions with prussics. And so um, instead of having to take all this off and then wrap prussics around, I'm gonna do a constrictor hitch around this. Um, it doesn't matter how I start. Um, and so, Rob, if you want to take that camera and pan in from my perspective. Um, so hold, James, hold down here. Yep. So what we're going to do, as you zoom in from the top, as I, as I bring this in, I'm going to fold this over like that. So now you can see what that is, right? Okay. So it doesn't matter how you start this. I'm going to start uh, here, and I'm going to fold this over everything. And prussic sizing does matter here because you don't want prussics that are going to be too small. And when I bring this over, it's in front of that initial loop. I'm going to choke up on this and bring this loop up and over everything. And in the end, when you bring it down and you look on, at, at the view from the side, it, it actually turns into a constrictor hitch right there. So that's a way to do a nice, and we want a constrictor hitch because uh, we don't want this to, to slip all the way to the bottom. Um, we want it to choke up um, and be nice and tight. So let me work around the pen, bring that down. My direction of pull is somewhere out there. So here, and I want to bring this forward because my direction of pull is forward. So make this like five to 10 degree pitch forward because I'm going to back tie this after I've set this. So we go down, rotate in. Your basic figure eight and a bite will suffice. And push that through, dress that up as I tie it. Okay, and get that in there. And I'm not gonna lock anything off just for speed. I'm gonna do a jumper, so I'm gonna do this again with another Prusik and a carabiner. I'm gonna go to the other forward tie and I'm gonna work my way around. So again, um, let's view from the from the tippy top going down. So as I come in, I, I cross over and I have two crossovers here. I'm gonna choose one side or the other to start flipping everything over. And when I do that, I wanna make sure that this is in front of that loop. Choke everything back up, flip the other way. This gives me a constrictor hitch press by sliding everything over and then I just dress it up on the, once I have it. So I can just sync that up, press it up got it so this is my jumper here to here healthy jumper okay all right so we're in James keep this pitch forward in the direction of our pull about five to ten degrees that's what we want Okay, so here I'm just going to go to this anchor point down here because this kind of represents like a 90 degree angle. So just like that, fold it in half this way. Okay, there we go. All right, choke this up a little bit, get it hand taut, and then realign it for a lower and then just lock this off.
that'll work. Okay, we're gonna have a dead leg here. It doesn't matter if it goes on, on top or underneath, but we're gonna continue on. So we have our two front ties that right now they aren't doing uh, much. I can adjust this a little bit later, um, but or I can just do it now. So I want this to be pitched forward roughly at 90 degrees because I'm gonna back tie this 90 degrees too. And I want this to be precious real estate. So it's gonna look something kind of like that. So this doesn't move. We keep this right here the entire time. Okay, so moving on. So we jumped, we're coming all the way back. So a non three to one back tie, a non working three to one back tie, but we're doing a reverse reeve. Um, so we kind of have to figure out what this is gonna look like um, if we started up front with a figure eight on a bite and then did our circle. Um, but now we're kind of reverse engineering this. So this strand that came from the jumper, this represents um, what's gonna be that change of direction where we tie off the two half inches on the top. So if I build this with that in mind um, and I have my jumper going there, it's gonna look something like that when I do a circle. So I'm gonna clip this in first. And here, in order for me to drag that not working three to one back tie out, I can't, I can't tie this whole thing off. So I need to just pick the first section, which is right here. I'm just gonna dog this section and this section alone off with like two half inches. Put my foot on that. And we're getting way into the weeds, um, but I'm doing this because I don't wanna have jumpers, um, or sorry, I don't wanna have to uh, be tying off my systems my non-working three to ones at that beachhead anchor up there. So that stays put. My circle now, I can use a carabiner. And ultimately I want it to end. So as the circle goes through like that, I want it to end like this. And I want the carabiner to end up just like that. And now I'm gonna drag this whole thing back. All right, so if you want to come down and view, like, we have two flanges here. I'm going to be putting things on both flanges, and if I guide just the upper one and then I load the lower one, uh, I can create uh, forces that are not level, and so it'll cause this rotational force for this leg to kick out. Is it a catastrophic failure? No, uh, but it does create a drop. Uh, that's what we want to avoid the entire time. So a good way to kind of equalize this out, we can tie it, uh, but like a simple way to kind of figure this out is just throw in like a prostate that's long enough that'll work for us. And one of these holes in the back side of it. And I'm gonna bring everything so we equalize it out. And again, so this is gonna clip in, but I'm gonna rotate this. I wanna clip in to everything here so that I can equalize this out. So into there, into there. Okay, so it's gonna look something like this. I'm not gonna rotate this yet. What I wanna do is, is kinda of take some of this, figure out where I need to tie that figure eight on a bite. I'm gonna tie it right here. So I'm gonna take this out of my carabiner, tie my figure eight on a bite. Try to keep it dressed for you. And as I tie it, I dress it by popping the top over the bottom while I tie it, just like that. Clip this back in, and now I can rotate my carabiner. And everything's in line. So, and now I can jump to the next one. So let's jump again. We're at 9.50. So I'm gonna do this a couple more times, and then, uh, but, but you get the idea. We're gonna, we're gonna jump, and then we're gonna do a non-working three to one again. Uh, I'm gonna do two more. Okay, so we finished all of our front ties and back ties, but we haven't tensioned anything yet. So if we look, again, there's our resultant. Uh, this is where we wanted to operate our anchor point from. We have two front tie out positions that we started with on uh, Italian hitches or mules. And as we look back, we kind of wanted to size everything up uh, to accommodate our resultants well, as well as the direction that we're going to pull on our back ties. So as best as we could, we tried to line up the, the line of our front tie going straight through our focus, our floating focused anchor, straight all the way back to one back tie. 
and then this back ties straight all the way back to the, to the other. And so this is roughly about 90 degrees inside here, and that equates to 90 degrees fanning out up front. Sometimes these front ties, you can't kind of get that symmetry, but um, this is kind of our, our range, our loading range. We can, we can load from here on this front tie, since it's straight back, all the way to here. So this is our range of loading where we can actually uh, hook up systems and have our resultant force going. Uh, ideally, we want this resultant force going back to that center back tie because that's our, our fall line that we identified. And so let's go about uh, think about how we tension this. We're gonna start by tensioning uh, that center one first that's closest to the resultant. And Rob, you're gonna take the camera. And I'm gonna go ahead and tension this by myself. Um, Normally, under normal circumstances, I want uh, more people here to kind of help seize. I did another video on non-working three-to-one back ties, um, where we uh, had some people help, and then we yard it and we crank down on this. And so, if you look at, at how I'm cranking down, and you can see that our, our tie up to the uh, our anchor system, it's we're, we're pulling it back, right? So we're trying to get this thing really tight. Um, so come back here since I'm by myself I need to capture what I've made um, and so I'm just gonna round turn it give myself a little bit of more tension just like a windlass and then I can dog this off with two half inches so I don't lose a whole lot of progress and granted this is not as tight as I would have liked because I don't have more hands um, but this is just for demonstration purposes so enough bite and then a second half hitch okay so we've tied the, the center one. We don't need to tie that one again. And now we need to tie, uh, we need to back tie our, our two, the two flanks simultaneously. So James is gonna uh, tension the black. I'm gonna tension the, the orange. We're gonna do this at the same time by undogging or releasing our lock on our non-working three to one back tie. And now James, let's go ahead and tension, ready? Okay, so we're both tensioning at the same time. Um, we don't need to yard on this a whole lot, but we want to get it like nice and snug. Yeah, and then once we're there, we can lock off. So right there, again, I'm gonna lock off. I do a round turn and then I can do two half hitches. So one and two, get that butt up against it. And two, whoops, and two, <laughs> there we go. All right. Cool, good day. Now let's check our anchors. All right. I could have put a little bit more slack in the jumper here, but that's okay. It's like a little hand top tension. Um, this thing is going nowhere. Um, it's almost straight. It's, it looks like it's leaning back just a little bit, but that's okay, because now I don't care. I can use either, this is like, this is called a beachhead anchor. So I'm gonna deem this bomb proof. And, it's all subjective, but bomb proof means that I can operate uh, my belay line in addition to my uh, working line from this anchor. Um, I'm comfortable with that. So where I operate, it's all uh, user uh, preference, but usually like we kind of like to mirror this up with Aztecs when we say like, Lou, do you want an Aztec? We kind of like to reserve uh, the bottom flange down here for uh, personal fall restraint connections for the people that are gonna be working at the edge. Um, we try to reserve that blue space below for that reason. And then we'll just use the upper points for uh, belays and main lines, et cetera. Um, so if you pan the camera from my perspective, and if this black rope on the ground was our, our, our plumb line. Um, granted, if this is a lower and we're going straight down, yeah, cool. Um, if it's a hull and we're just building a hull system in line with this, cool. If it's a hull and we're making some sort of change of direction, if this is gonna become a change of direction in addition to that, like say after we've lowered, um, and we decide to direct a pulley out in one direction or another, um, that's gonna change my result, of course. And so it's just one thing to, be, to keep in mind or, or be mindful of if I, if I wanna do a change of direction. This can't be a directional on its own because it, it won't function. It has to go down, up, and a three to one, and then we, and then we direct it out. Um, and then when we direct it out, we move the resultant from straight in. So maybe not all the way that bisects these two points, but pretty close. There's already a three to one here, so our resultant's going to shift. And in the end, our net resultant's going to be somewhere like in this general area, and that's okay because when you look at where our back ties are, and from the previous video, we said that we have a an operating range that we can we can 
shift our resultant within this, within our, our lateral back ties. So if, if you go, if our resultant's now kind of over here a little bit, um, that's fine because we're, we're, we're in our footprint. Um, we've anticipated those forces. So um, yeah, really the whole point of this video is to showcase how you can go about front tie oppositions and back ties uh, with just one piece of cordage. I can use uh, like Portuguese ball lines in here, but that, that can get a little bit messy. Um, so if you have press six, that just cleans everything up. So I don't have to use any kind of elaborate uh, bow lines with a bites and then you get a lot of cordage up here. So I wanna keep this photo worthy and I wanna keep this uh, free of any uh, adjustments that I need to make on the back tie. So I wanna make all my adjustments on the back ties away on my primary anchors back there and keep everything up here. Um, jumpers are fine. So it's just, just a system of jumpers up top. And that's the OCD way of making a bomb-proof, floating-focused anchor.